Hi, I'm Uta. And I'm Ron. And we are Salty Beaver Explorers. Thanks for coming along on our drive from Vernon to Salmon Arm today. We're going to explore a little bit of the history along the way and give you some interesting information. To give you a little context of our drive, we are in this area of the interior of British Columbia. Three provincial highways connect Vernon. Highway 97, which connects north-south, Kelowna to Kamloops. Highway 97A, which begins in Vernon and goes north to Armstrong and Enderby. This is the way which we will be traveling. And Highway 6, which ends in Vernon, running east-west to Lumby. We begin our journey on the north end of Vernon with a large shopping district. We are about to head on to Highway 97A. Vernon is the hub of the Okanagan and has a population of over 43,000. The site of the city was discovered by the Okanagan people, a tribe of the interior Salish people who initially named the community Nintal Muschin, meaning jumping over place where the creek narrows. But the city was known by three additional names, Forge Valley, Priests Valley and Centerville, before finally being called Vernon. In 1887, the town was officially named Vernon after Forbes George Vernon, a former member of Legislative Assembly of the Province of British Columbia. To the left you'll see Swan Lake. Swan Lake and its surrounding wetlands provide some of the best bird watching in British Columbia. It's a breeding, nesting and migration haven for ducks, waterfowl, marsh birds and more. American white pelicans and trumpeter swans still migrate through each spring and fall. The fruit industry in Vernon would eventually become famous all over the country and the world for its fine produce. The Swan Lake Fruit Market and Garden Centre has operated from the same location on Highway 97 since 1959. Serving customers for over 60 years and voted the best garden centre and place to buy local fruit and vegetables in the Okanagan. Away from things I let go, floating on the way. We go bottoms up, we go all the way. When you're feeling down, push the pain away. We go bottoms up, we go all the way. And face the another day. We go bottoms up. Spalamchine is a district municipality with an approximate population of 5,055. The district, whose official name is the township of Spalamchine, is the oldest rural municipality in the BC interior, incorporated in 1892. It consists primarily of agricultural land surrounding the separately incorporated city of Armstrong.
the city of Armstrong is a rural community and commercial centre of the North Okanagan, with agriculture, grain farming of alfalfa and corn, logging and ranching being traditional economic activities. It is located amidst the dairy and farmlands of the Spalamchine Valley. The influence of Dutch immigrants settling in the valley after the Second World War is represented by their cheese-making knowledge, allowing Armstrong to become well known for the cheese it produces. But look at us now, could have gone so far, it hurts to realize we're parted. Yeah, look at us now, this is who we are. And I just know things will never be the same We're like strangers again, again, again Strangers again, again, again We're like strangers again, again, again I just know things will never be the same We're like strangers again Tried much harder, knew all we had was scars. You said we'd get so high, higher up than heaven. You said we'd reach the stars. But look at us now, could have gone so far. It hurts to realize we're parted. And yeah, look at us now. There is lots to see on the right, including goats and dinosaurs. The Log Barn 1912 is a unique agricultural farm-based business that started in 1994. They sell old-fashioned sausages, cheeses, pies, assorted pastries, jams, jellies, and giftware. Started. It's time to get my head up again You said that you had to I'll try to forget you Just didn't think we'd end up this way Like strangers again The 1,200 meter high Enderby Cliffs extend below a long ridge running along the Shuswap River Valley. The cliffs were created by deep glacial scouring of old lava beds which flowed south from Shuswap Lake. During the Eocene time period, parts of the interior of the province underwent fault-laded extension, opening up numerous cracks that extended deep into the Earth's crust. These cracks created paths for the upwelling of magma, resulting in a number of volcanic areas. The rocks in the Enderby Cliffs are about 42 and a half million years old. The lava flows would have formed a cap over the landscape at the time. Rivers and later glaciers carved valleys through them. The remnants of these flows form flat top mountains throughout much of south central British Columbia. Numerous flows created the layered appearance that you see in the cliffs. for the city of Enderby was Fortune's Landing, after the first landowner in the area and the steamboat stop at his farm. 
From 1876, the steamboat stopped at the new Lambie Brothers Warehouse and the town became known variously as Lambie's Landing or Steamboat Landing, despite the provincial governments having named the town site Belvedere. Enderby was chosen as an appropriate name for the town following a flood in 1887. It was named after a poem, The High Tide on the Coast of Lincolnshire, 1571, by Jean Ingelow about a flood in England. On the right is North Enderby Timber, and it manufactures many different lines of Western Red Cedar products, and has done so since 1984. And some more good views of the Enderby Cliffs. Here we are turning off to the left on Highway 97B. This will take us just before Salmon Arm back onto the Trans-Canada Highway, which is Highway 1. If we were to continue on Highway 97A, it would also end up on Highway 1, but it takes us to Sycamus, Revelstoke and eventually the Alberta border. Along this stretch of 97B, we do come upon two small communities before Salmon Arm called Deep Creek and Ranchero. You go to my head Cause I know I'm dealing with the devil But I'm standing With my heart in your head And I'm too deep into in this gamble Hold me towards you And I cannot fight it My head's underwater I try to disguise it I want you to hold me Though we haven't spoken I need that something To get me open 
Coming up on the left is the R.J. Haney Heritage Village and Museum. Preserved and replica heritage buildings are featured in this open-air museum of early Canadian life. The distance between Vernon and Salmon Arm is approximately 60 kilometers and takes approximately 43 minutes. This is the intersection of Highway 1, the Trans-Canada Highway, which we have just turned onto, heading into Salmon Arm. Salmon Arm lies on the Trans-Canada Highway, approximately halfway between Vancouver and Calgary. The summer months are when the city experiences its largest fluctuation of population, with people on holidays coming to visit the city and surrounding areas. Approximate population of the city is 17,000. for coming along our trip with us. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If so, please consider subscribing, give us a like, and leave us a comment because we love hearing from you.